Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. In today's episode of Personal Finance Today, we are covering three tips for going towards personal and financial freedom. If this sounds interesting to you, please take a moment and subscribe to our channel. If you want to know my number one recommendation to make a full-time income online, please click on the first link in the description below. Now let's take a deep dive into the three tips to help you reach your financial dreams. As we enter 2022, we can finally wave goodbye to a year that brought innumerable problems and turmoil to practically everyone's daily lives. I'm sure the majority of people are thinking the same thing. The threshold for making 2022 a good year may be low, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to plan ahead and think about what you can do now to maximize your chances of success. That combination, planning and proactivity, are tremendously powerful factors that you may employ to your advantage when it comes to your finances. To get started, we recommend following our simple three-step strategy for laying a solid basis for your financial planning in 2022. The first step is to find a balance. It's all about striking a balance between living in the moment and planning wisely for the future. Understanding how much you should spend now to enjoy your life completely, as well as how much you should save for tomorrow to ensure your financial security in the future, is key to achieving financial balance. However, you're asking the wrong question if you're trying to figure out that balance by asking how much can I spend? Instead, consider what you need to save first. Sa setting a savings rate that allows you to establish financial security and attain your most important long-term goals, such as financial independence or retirement, is one way to do so. Particular savings rate for you will be determined by your specific goals, your current assets, and the schedule you have in mind between now and when you want to attain your goal. Experts have always advocated saving 10% to 20% of your salary for long-term financial goals. That range might be appropriate for you, and it's an excellent place to start if you've never set up a significant savings plan before, something is better than nothing. However, the more aggressive your objectives, the more money you'll need to set aside. At our financial planning firm, we recommend a savings rate of 25% of gross household income as a starting point for clients, with a range of 30 to 40% for those who desire to attain financial independence or retire early. You can likely spend whatever is left over on fixed or discretionary spending without fear or guilt if you've saved enough to meet your target rate. Savings are essential, but money is a tool that should be utilized. That implies that you should be able to spend as much as you want. Even people who save a high percentage of their income may probably find ways to save even more. But what's the point if you're already saving enough? We believe there is such a thing as saving too much, and you've reached that point if you're continually sacrificing being present. And enjoying experiences today in favor of socking away every available dollar for a far off someday. When you use this approach, which prioritizes and locks in your savings first, you have the freedom to spend the remaining portion of your income flow on whatever you want to live well today. Step 2 is to create a plan. Make a list of your goals and objectives. Making financial decisions might be challenging because you can't afford everything you want at the same time unless you have an endless amount of cash. You must say no to certain things in order to truly embrace and appreciate others. That is why you must get a clear understanding of your priorities. And in order to accomplish so, you must first grasp what is most essential to you. You must determine your values. We recommend this wonderful list of 50 key principles from James Clear to our financial planning clients who aren't sure how to identify their values. We suggest they choose 3 to 5, but no more than 5, that truly resonate with how they want to live and the experiences that are most important to them. We propose that couples read over this list twice, once individually and then again as a pair. In touch with, even though you are committed to a significant other, you are ultimately your own person, and you may not share your partner's or spouse's specific values. I don't know what those differences are because it can help us think more clearly about planning items and goal setting. You should also consider your intentions. You can delve deeper into this by asking questions like, what do you aim to achieve? What kinds of adventures do you want to have? What do you wish to do with your free time? What gives significance to your life, and do you experience a sense of purpose? It's fine if you don't know the answers to all of these questions. The idea is to start the dialogue and explore with the purpose of determining what is most essential to you. And what isn't as significant. You may then more readily set priorities and be more deliberate about how you spend your time, energy, and money. When you're in touch with what matters most, it's easier to make financial decisions because you know what's important and what's not. Step 3 is the most important. Concentrate on what you have control over. The previous couple years demonstrated that there is a vast universe outside of our own lives over which we have very little influence. 
if you're aware that external factors could appear at any time to obstruct your development, such a revelation can make you feel powerless or make you question the point of your financial ambitions. That is why it is so important to concentrate on what you can manage. Determine what you can genuinely impact, and then focus your energy and attention there. You cannot prevent unpleasant things from occurring, but you may prepare for them. You can't avoid all life's trials and hurdles, but you can choose how you respond to them. You can't control everything that happens, but you can concentrate on what you can and take action on it. It isn't always simple. However, there isn't much on the route to financial success that isn't difficult. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you would like to see more videos like this one, please take a moment and subscribe to our channel. Until the next episode of Personal Finance Today, stay safe out there.